What are the odds Trevor's okay? Uh, probably not very good. <laughs> Brought you a continental breakfast. Thank you. You guys are so sweet. We were even able to get a Monster Energy. What? Uh, but you couldn't unlock the door? <laughs> <laughs> I got it, I, I got it. it. Day four, we are headed to the Tulare, California World Egg Expo. Early morning. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't itch like crazy, does it, Trevor? Just from all the bugs? Mmm. Not yet. <laughs> it takes a while to kick in. Mm -hmm. One shank. That's awesome. I don't want to brag, but we have media credentials. This guy over here never gets off his phone. Remember the movie Night at the Roxbury? Yes. They, they walk in. They walk in like. <laughs> yeah. No, that's Gar that's uh, that's Wayne's World. <laughs> wrong wrong show. They get the backstage passes to Alex Cooper. Now that right there, I think that's a spaceship. And those swing around and levitate the machine and you can take it to anywhere in space? Yeah, anywhere you want. Seems to make the most logical sense to me. It's actually a, well they call it a hedger, but is it the same thing as a tree topper? Trevor, I'm asking you because you might know slightly more I than can us. Do, I can do both. See how it, uh, it can pivot up there so you can go right down the middle of a row and do sides or it can swing out and do tops. And it'll trim the Trim the trees or the, the bush. The bush. We may possibly get to see one of these in action. Not in this. I doubt in this video, right but here, next couple, next couple of days. You said it was a and friction. one of these uh, these almond shakers. Is that what they call them? If you're an actual almond farmer, you call it a, a shaker. Almond. Am oh yeah. Ammon. Vibrator. We cannot keep Trevor Bales from walking towards the hay stuff. Is this like the same model that that you have that Onyx ran last year? Same yeah, thing. We have a brand new one this year. You guys run a brand new So did you one. trade or? Yeah. yeah? Yeah. Nice. Goes a thousand miles an hour. Nice. A thousand? That's a, quite a can step up. Can you do up. reverse wheelies? Yeah, that's the only way you can do them because the... Look at they watered this this 15 square foot chunk of grass. You gotta keep the grass growing. That's right. Yeah. This is a 2680 high speed disc. They run those out here? Assuming so, somewhere? I don't know what you, I don't know, I guess. From what I've seen, it seems like everything's so hard, they're driving pretty slow. This is the Grady Twin Pack. It makes two bales out of one, essentially. It's making one bale that's really wide, that makes two three-string bales. It makes one bale that's really wide, and it has a knife blade right down the middle. And so when the plunger, plunger packs the hay in, it's just slowly cutting that bale in half. Two bales fall out. So it's pretty cool. This one comes right out. This one sits there and gets pushed out by the next bale. So they're not side by side in a windrow, they're, or in the row. So they're staggered. So then your your uh, your bale wagon can swing around and pick them all up in one go. So you're still ending up with the same size bales. You're still sending up with, well, they're actually a couple inches smaller, which I, I like that as well. I, I want a little bit smaller bale. Are you then, are you able to drive faster or take in more yes, material? You, you can, yes. So it's got the pickup of a, of a large bale, of a big baler. And so you can feed this thing eats hay. It eats up a lot more hay, so you're driving quite a bit faster. Yes. It's just that much more efficient. Yeah, it, yeah, so you're raking, you can rake three or four windrows together and then pick it up with this machine. So theoretically, you could replace four balers with this machine. Is it going to change the industry? I don't know. It's, it's a very expensive piece of machinery. It takes a large tractor to pull it. Those are just wicked, wicked machines. I've never actually been out to see one run. I've seen them run from the road. Yeah. Can you imagine running into this in a car, like head on, going down the road? Oh. I don't think you'd have much of a story to tell. Paramedics would. They would, yeah. We're all the way down on the north end of the grounds here. It looks like Randy and I found the spot where they race tractors. Correct. So we're going to see if we can hop in one and get, get our lap times. We were actually kind of hoping that the demo area would have actual plows or deep shanks behind the tractors but but racing is fun too yeah racing is fun too there's the tracked fent i suppose that would be essentially the same model as the 743 challenger that we had uh out at our place a couple of years ago three years ago i don't know if it's the exact same model but the same uh might just be a different engine this one is definitely not set up for our area no for not for our area yeah, that would pack with mud right away around us. Do so, you suppose Trevor's just going to follow us strangely all day and be on his phone? Is this building 
250 feet long. That is a huge building. Too intimidating for us right now. We gotta ease into it. For sure. That's gotta be from one end to the other, like, that's three quarters of a mile, isn't it? It's a long ways. Trevor's gonna teach us how a knotter works. This machine is gonna teach you. I'm not this gonna teach you anything. You gotta talk oh, us through it. You turn it the wrong way. Come here. Come even here. a real Come favor. That didn't sound good, did it? Did it work? I broke it. It's going the wrong way. That's <laughs> uh. Oh, we so, is that that always happens? <laughs> I broke the knotter. I broke the string. Where are we tied again? You guys know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna let you figure it out. You were gonna show us. <laughs> we can't bring him anywhere. No. You can deny it all you want, but I I got that on video. <laughs> Super embarrassing now. I don't remember where you got tired. Well, I'm gonna have to come back here later. Ten o'clock. I'm here now with uh, Randy Nesman, who has nothing to do with the machinery in the background, but he is gonna Correct. explain what this does. I, I got a 10 second tutorial, so I'm now an expert in citrus harvesting. <laughs> so, anyways, they pick up the empty drum, pallet, pick crate, up the empty, they call it a crate, run it in, scissors lifts it up. They have two platforms where people are working. Picking the fruit, uh, vegetables, whatever they're picking. And they're hanging from harnesses yep. that are strapped up there. Drop it in there when the bin's full, they lower it back down, and it runs out the back, they pick up an empty one, bring it in. And that that guy over there, he takes off with the crate, right? Correct. Yep. Yeah. He brings it to wherever the trucks. He's the crate runner. Trevor ran into his buddies from uh, Stolly West here, and I'm, I'm hoping to get on camera and explain exactly what a hay steamer does, what it is, why they make it, because Trevor's got, I think, two of them now on his farm. And for us in Minnesota, it's a crazy foreign concept to think that you actually want to steam hay and put moisture in, but hopefully I'll get one of them to explain that. Why does Trevor, why does anybody want to steam alfalfa? Because I'm from Minnesota where that's, we're, we can't get it dry enough. Trevor, for instance, in the desert, they just don't get good consistent natural dew. So the process that we developed on the farm that I managed for 30 years was to um, use steam to rehydrate hay during the baling process in a very controlled way um, to put just the right amount of moisture in the bale so that it, it stores well, but it also bales well. It softens and makes the hay go kind of limp when the steam touches the hay. And as it goes through the baler, it doesn't thrash it up. It keeps all the leaves together and keeps the keeps them on the stems, and it's just beautiful. We were told by Alan that we've got to come to the Yankum Ropes booth, so here we are at the Yankum Ropes booth, and there's nobody here, so. It looks like Randy's gonna man the booth and Trevor and I are just gonna play some bags. I meant to say bags. Bags, is that bag. right? You, you like egg bag. I, <laughs> bag. I, bag. Bad. Huh? Bag. Ba bag. Bag. It's a bag. Oh! Becky, you can just go ahead and delete that last clip where I missed the board by three feet. Sure, you bet. Come back any day. That's what you get, Alan. That, that was legitimately not set up. Randy just gave away Yankum's hat. I, I can't find another one to replace it. Here, Oh, they got gummy bears. Yeah. That shackle's rated for 37. We should look at the big rope. That, the big rope says uh, 40... 40,200. 40,200? Yeah, what, is, what does that number mean then? So there's your 40,000. I'd say the... No, we're gonna go 201. We got this. 200. Okay. 201, yeah, because it's a bigger, more impressive number. Right, 201,000 pounds. No problem. That's the rating if you're lifting by helicopter. If you're if you're pulling horizontally, it's 40,000. Work on that. Hey, the owner of Yankum Ropes is calling. Ask him how much they'll pull. Alan, 201 is the braking strength. Ah. Working load is 40,000. Working load is 40,000. Yep. 
I, I, sure one. I was just filling out the waiver so that I could drive a Fent tractor, and you guys are come, gonna come interrupt that? Can I, can I do what? You, you're interrupting my waiver to go drive a tractor. I was gonna drive a tractor. Is that hat allowed here? I'm sorry, sir. I'm sir. I'm sorry. I, just, I don't want. I don't want to interrupt your your, your happy time. <laughs> Um, I'll drive it. Okay. Yeah. So I, w I was wrong earlier talking about the track tractor. This is actually the size up. So this one, I, see, we've run a 743 Challenge. Okay. Which would be a, a model down from yep. this, right? So this is yeah. this is the heavier one. He was saying this is 700 and 670, 670 horse engine horse. Alrighty. We'll see what yeah, the cab was right like. Now, 700. This is the inside cab should be pretty much the same. Pretty similar. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's pretty similar. This, the stick here is different than what that 743 had. Yes, the Challenger does not have this piece up here, so it only has this guy. Oh, I see. Just like that. There okay. we go. Or you can use the pedal mode up to you. They've done a really good job of engineering these tracks on that uh, Challenger we ran. It was really, really smooth. So we have we have a few, we have, uh, we have several deer RTs. Oh, yes, yeah, so you can tell the difference. You can tell a big difference, yeah. yeah. So that's Randy in there. That must be about as fast as he's comfortable driving. I'm not surprised. You guys got any hats? Free hats? You know, I think somebody gave them all away. <laughs> How's it going? It's going good. How are good, you? Good, good. Good to meet for... you. You have to say it very naturally now. Very naturally. Yep. By by using this hook, it it, it has the potential to become, well, a projectile. Yep. And so we figured out a way to completely delete that. There's another YouTube channel, The Dirt Lifestyle where we worked with on this design. And what it is, this is the fair lead replacement. And so this is called the groove lead. It replaces this here, so that then you can have your winch line without a hook. So you'll run the line all the way back to the vehicle? So this is so this is, this would be the winch line inside of your bump. Yep. Just like you see here. He's the, the vehicle. The Jeep. <laughs> You're the Jeep? Okay. So this would be bolted to the front of the, <laughs> yeah. So this is bolted to the front of the front of the Jeep. You don't have to have a hook anymore. Now you can just have the locking brummel, and then this will slide over the horn. You cinch that down, and you're good to go. Now you can hit trees, rocks. I got gotcha. you. You're not going to damage your winch line anymore. And this is the only way to protect that on the market today. Like, this is the only way to do it. One of the biggest issues with those those hooks, like I said, they, they have a tendency to open if they're under too much load. Yep. And that's the last thing you want. Or they can you loop it around, you hook it on the on the rope. They can cut the rope a little bit. Yep, or, yeah, exactly. This is what you'd use. Yep. Okay. To replace yep. the hook. Yeah. Okay. So, I saw this earlier. I didn't know what this were. Yep. So just like I was saying before, you got the bumper. You got the the fair lead here. Here, I'll be the tree you're gonna pull on. Yeah. And then you'd have a strap around that. You use the soft shackle, and then you would hook to both of those. This is this is the, the best demonstration I've ever given. <laughs> And then you'd have that hooked to the strap that goes around the tree. Yep. And then now you're... You can't put this around the tree and hook it back? No, nope, you'll damage you'll damage the tree. Okay. The tree. And, and... Oh, yeah. Did you guys see that? We got to meet the Welkers. I got a hat signed by all three of them over there. I don't know. I, don't, I wouldn't want to stick my berries in there. <laughs> Fuck them. <laughs> So this must be a back scratcher. I think so. Yeah. Actually, it's, it's more of a massager. You just sure. walk through real slow. I'd actually be really interested in watching this run. I have no idea. Takes the tree right in there. I'm not even going to guess. We should probably find somebody. Yep. So can you describe how this one works? Yeah, you drive through the grapes. Doesn't really matter what goes on in there, but the grapes fall off and then go up these conveyors. And then they, they spout it off into into a, some kind of a bin. So it's like that's that was such an in-depth <laughs> way of could you explain it in layman's terms? <laughs> we found somebody who knows what Randy and I are trying to look at here. So I've got Catherine from Oxbow and she's gonna explain to us not not in too much detail exactly how they work, but exactly what we're looking at. Because I think they all just kind of look like spaceships. <laughs> Well, and we could talk about harvesting equipment all day. Um, so we make specialty egg equipment. So um, what we're looking at here is a berry harvester. So the way that it works is it goes over the top of the plant and then the shaking rods are gonna selectively shake off just the right fruit 
grapefruit goes onto catch plates and then it's gonna go, this particular version, the fruit goes to the top of the machine where you can sort out um, and you have cleaning fans or you put it into containers and then they're unloaded by on the back where the duck comes down. So I didn't want to get into too much detail but then you added the fact that they selectively pick yes, the ripe yes. fruit? Yep. How? So you set the shaker so that, because the ripe fruit comes off easier from the plant than the unripe fruit. So on a blueberry plant, you're gonna have green fruit, which is immature, still developing. You're gonna have some ripe purple fruit that is not quite ripe, but will be in a few days. And then you'll have your blue fruit that is ripe. So it's gonna, you're gonna come through maybe three to five times in a season and pick the same row. You set the RPM of the shaking head. The so RPM the, of the yep, shaking head. Yep. Every time somebody out here in California explains something like that, and it seems like it would be so technical. No, you just set the RPMs on the shaking head. That's all right. Yeah. That's all right. And if you see too much green, you back it off a little. If you see too much blue on the plant, you speed it up just a little bit. So this is a super high density crop harvester. So typically for super high density olives, so they're dwarfing rootstock grown in a hedgerow. The machine comes over the top and this machine shakes the plant back and forth this way and releases the olives. They go in the buckets, go to the top, get cleaned, and they go into a container. So there's an arm that puts them in a, we call it a gondola. And then the gondola dumps the fruit and they would be milled. So the mill for olive oil. So if you see domestic oil um, in the grocery store, typically a machine like this has harvested the olives. This one looks this really one cool. This over here is, this is a grape harvester. Again, you go over the row, same like an olive harvester, you're gonna shake it back and forth. Um, the grapes come off and go into buckets, they go to the top and they're cleaned with a fan. This particular one has a destemming and sorting system on the top, so you get the clusters of grapes. They're removed from the rachis. The rachis goes to the ground and then we sort out like fine matter, we call them jacks or petioles or little leaf fragments. So you can actually, could go straight to tank with your fruit. And this is a multifunction machine. So the back section, you can kind of see some clamps on the side. Yes. You can take the whole harvesting system off. So you can break it down from like behind the yep. cab? Yep, so this, this is independent of this section. So you got the wheels, you can see how the wheel connects to the mainframe. Undo the latch, drop the picking system, and you can put on a four row sprayer. So 600 or 900 gallon tank, and you can spray four rows of grapes at a time. And then you could also drop the sprayer and you can put a tool carrier on the front and do some pruning. It's, it's, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> and then over here um, is a vegetable harvester. So it's got right now how it's set up, it has a green bean head on it. So you go over multiple rows of green beans, you strip off the beans and the leaves, they go up the center of the machine where you clean out the leaf with a fan and then the, the beans end up in the dump box. That box comes up and it dumps into like a transfer truck trailer. Yep. Um, and a 2430 or 25 series, you could put also on a sweet corn head and you could do a sweet corn head with individual rows, kind of like a, a more commercial corn head, um, but we pick the whole ear. Um, or you can do for fresh market and that's a little different yet where it pulls the stock down and pops the ears off. So they grow some sweet corn around us, yes. and actually somebody from Oxbow had gotten in touch with me, and okay. I, I was hoping to go out and do a, a sweet corn harvest video with okay. them. Okay, yeah, absolutely. It didn't work out because of the timing and the weather, okay. of course. Okay, of course. But is that the type of machine that I probably would have Probably, seen? maybe a slightly larger model. Um, okay. So we make a couple in that series. So it's um, you know, the style of harvester with the articulating chassis as part of this 25 series of ours. But yep, probably something just like that. Probably a 25, 75 if I had to guess. I always think these things look like uh, like doomsday tractors. Yeah, like when are. things really go down and it's the end of the world, this are. is the kind of thing you're going to hop into. Right. So, Randy, do you know, I mean, this is for working in orchards, right? Yeah, so you, So you're, you're, you're working with branches and stuff. Yeah. Branches and... So the branches push up over the top out of your way so you're not breaking them off. Yep. And then if you were to break off a big branch, then it protects you. Protects you, protects the... The tractor so you're not beating up a real nice cab even though i mean it's still real nice you guys know what i'm saying it's i mean they're built like a tank yeah keeps from dropping nuts in your head randy has decided to go for it so the objective here is they've got uh the soccer ball the football the basketball and they're timing him to see how how quickly you can scoop them off the tees and get them in the bucket we stood here and watched about three people ahead of him and I didn't see anybody get the, any of the balls in the bucket. They were able to get it in in the shovel, but not in the garbage can. There he's got one. There we go. Oh, that's the tough one. He did it. 
You're my hero, Randy. Yes. That was awesome. Yeah, you bet. The champion. <laughs> Two will be fine for a best. I'm sure they're there. Yes. To be honest, were, were you real nervous about the football? Because you never know which way that's going to flip on the way out. Did you see I had to give out. it a little extra jerk to get it drop in there, right? I, I, I had to correct. You had to correct it? I had to correct so it. So you weren't nervous. You knew what you had to do. Correct, yeah. You've been training it's for just, this moment. It's just executing. I knew what I had to do. You just got to execute. Yeah, I guess, you know, I'd like to thank my sponsors. Uh, New Holland here, of course. Um, the uh, uh, work brow bucket that was on that. I'm pretty sure it was a work brow. Not really sure. Uh, and then and then Wilson. Wilson for the volleyball. That was uh, Spalding. Yep. Wilson Spalding and... Uh, I can't think of the other one. Ah. Titleist. Titleist, there yeah, you go. Yeah. Yep. Anyways, uh, thanks guys, it's great. Uh, you know, we're just really out here doing what we do. Beautiful, congratulations today on yeah, a great run. You bet. Something does smell delicious. Could you drive this thing, Randy? Have you ever oh. driven a New Holland oh Combine? God, yeah. Yeah? It's got big tracks on it, long tracks. Uh, no, that's the same size. That's the same as what you got? Yeah, class nine. It appears as though there's some humans up ahead. Say so we should avoid that area. Yeah, we're gonna turn before we have to deal with that. That looks awful. There's no line, Randy. It's meant to be. It's meant to be. N not for the porta biffs for the, the beer garden. That appears to be a, a lift. Like Randy just pointed out, it's shaped the same way as the, uh, the one we were in the other day when we were doing palm tree work, when they hired us to Pollinate palm trees. Dethorn. Dethorn, pollinate. This is some big equipment. Bunch more tree toppers here. We're actually in contact with a crew that has some tree toppers, so we're gonna see if we can get to some in the next couple days here. Now you wanna talk about a doomsday machine. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, those are, that's crazy. I don't know if you guys have ever seen them online. We have them run for demo, we could toss bananas or something up there. You could. They're crazy. It's like giant skill saw arms just swinging around in the air. Wonder if, wonder if one ever comes off the shaft. They've got to once in a while. You'd, you'd think so. Yeah, somebody somewhere has That's done that. That's what that cage is for. So the machine <laughs> running next to you and the blade comes off. You can't right. get through the cap. And right there we have a wacky waving inflatable arm flailing tube man. It's a uh, it's a Wilcox machine. Correct. Yeah. yeah. It's got like a. What is that? Five foot, six foot long shank on it there, with the plow blades up front. And I'm gonna walk around it with this camera, and um, and really just have no idea what I'm looking at or talking about. Correct. That's happened a lot today. Yeah. But it's cool. Something. Uh, Randy, help me out. I'm at a lot. I thought it was drip tape, but I don't think it is. But this obviously feeds something, right? Obviously, yeah, it has to. Mm-hmm, so we're looking at some sort of a feeder, a something yeah. feeder. I hope you guys appreciate the fact that I don't get too technical. Oh, they, it's we, the wrong We literally way. stood five feet behind the sign like idiots. Of course, it's a tape extractor. That's for pulling up drip tape. Yep, I in. knew it. This is a cotton bale. You can tell it's a cotton bale because of the way it is. See, Randy doesn't get too technical either. I thought... So they obviously clean it afterwards. That, well, this they is, would have this to, is right? just rough from the field, yeah. Then it goes to the uh, cotton gin. Or maybe this is the type of cotton that they make super itchy shirts out of. Could be, yes. They leave the seeds and the it's, sticks in it. It's the lumpy shirts. <laughs> so we tried to see how cases worked, and we broke it. You did? <laughs> <laughs> well, not us. Our buddy did. He's gone now. He left. That's good. Okay. So this is all basically off of... Baylor. The only thing that's a little bit unique is the fact that this piece right here, this black piece, yep. is added uh, just to keep the geometry of the twine correct. Okay. Because that needle's only two foot long instead of five foot. Sure. So, we're going to stop and start and carry on. So, two knots. One finishes the bale, one starts the next bale. And that's because you got two sets of gear teeth. Okay. So I had to run through it. Yep. Okay. Oh, hold on. Don't when break I, it. Well, when I pulled the twine, I pulled it off the lower because I don't. I'm not as consistent as I thought. Oh, awesome. 
and that's pretty much been the same since. I mean, in a nutshell, I'm sure there's little things, but. So, <laughs> take a wild stab when this one. Yeah, we have Would have been. Uh, is it a 108 day there? 108, whatever that first time is? We got three now. Uh, 40s. 50s. 1940s. So you can go look it up on uh, Wikipedia. Yeah, uh, John Appleby, in Wisconsin. And the restaurant guy? No, his brother. <laughs> 1858. Thereabouts. Yeah. Prior to the Civil War, he was like 15, 16 years old. Invented it. Uh, whittled one out, hung it up in the barn because he figured at that age he tried to sell it to somebody and just cheat him. So went off Civil War, invented some more stuff. And basically, it was used for patent for binders. Ever, ever All right, the goal here is got to get the bucket up, dip the dip the bolt into the cone, then you got to get the football into the bucket and back on the ground. Oh, oh come on! Oh, oh! Hey, okay, that looks like it's good to me. Let's move on to the football. <laughs> move on to the football. He just did way better than the last guy. <laughs> What do they do if it doesn't show up to work? Splice the cord back together. <laughs> <laughs> it's like two, three pounds, three, four pounds. I assume it's, it's oh yeah, good. all carbon fiber. So this company, Tavel, is from Israel. I, I know that because I heard them just say that. But nobody has to be out there with I don't, the robots, robots, right? I mean, they're not right, drones, yeah, they're, robots. they're robots. And they actually see, they identify the fruit and will grab it and they said, nobody has to be out there, it'll fly through the orchards. They fly around the branches. And then it'll put it in the appropriate bin. In the so, appropriate, uh, oh, it sorts it too? I didn't catch that. That's, that's why there's two bins there, I was dropping it. Oh my gosh. So it's grading it also. That's crazy. And then, and then also keeping the data of what it's picking, oh, where sure, it's picking yeah. from. I suppose. So have all that also. Look at that truck. That is a badass work truck right there. It is. I see him. I see Trevor Bales. He's the hideous human over there. Did, did, Don't did, make did, that did. Beep. <laughs> it's getting close to three o'clock now. So our plan is we're, we're headed back to the car to get our podcasting stuff. And hopefully we're going to record an episode of Off the Husk with uh, the Welkers right in the case booth. We're running late as usual, so hopefully they'll they'll the media center here, which we have media passes. They've got some golf carts. We're hoping to we're hoping to catch a ride. So right here is my very official uh, media transportation device. This is all pad podcasting equipment that I've never used before. Ah, oh, there we go. You better carry that for me, Trevor. Yes, sir. So they have frost protection fans, portable fans you put next to a crop when it's going to freeze in your area. It's about to take off. It's about to take off. But Trevor's still trying to convince Randy that that's what they do, and Randy doesn't actually believe him. The, the leaves aren't even the blowing potato. on the tree branch. It isn't even Look moving any wind. On a There's a huge potato? There. The famous Idaho potato tur. Is it real? Yes, that is not moving. a real potato. There's wind moving. There. Oh, there's a lot of wind moving there if you look at these trees. Look at even that Maybe. next one is... See, I told you my friend Trevor wouldn't lie. Maybe Trevor's right. He's not a fibber. I, I make things up, I don't lie. There's a difference. <laughs> yeah, big difference. I heard that. They know that. Yeah, they thought that was pretty funny that you, you tagged them admitting what you had done. <laughs> Apparently we don't get a VIP out. booth up there. It's not actually VIP, but we'll call it that. Trevor, can I carry my suitcase now so I don't feel weird really? not carrying my own stuff? Hey guys! Him, him, but not him. him. Not him, but he's not got my guy. suitcase. That's my guy that carries my my very right. fancy technology case. Okay, we just tell him to keep it closed all this time. Is it because I flood here? <laughs> There's no controlling that. It just happened sporadically. <laughs> so we, we weren't kidding. We've never used this equipment before, so we'll open it up here and see what we got. Can you just start pushing buttons? Uh, no, please don't do that, sir. What's your real name? <laughs> I love it. 
Scott. Please. <laughs> I, love it. I knew it. That's okay. <laughs> well, you're Randy the Master Pipe Layer, so. Yeah. Yes. I brain farted. I knew it was Scott. I'd known it Scott, but for a second there I went, oh crap, what's his real name? <laughs> you could retry it. He showed me the arrow that you're supposed to <laughs> I'll show you the arrow. <laughs> Alright, let's go check it out. Dang it. I heard it, but we missed it. You guys walked away too quickly. What did you do? So you didn't break it? No, it's fine. There's something wrong right here. No, yeah, keep going. No, 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 there's a, this, this knot's actually not supposed to be. Trevor, what do you Nobody do? turn oh, it. No, it, what, the old knot got, I know not to mess with a knotter. <laughs> not to mess with a knotter. <laughs> Oops. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now it's broke. We are not having good luck. I think it's over. Let me get my compass. Well, this, this party really died. <laughs> I'm glad we did. They're about to tow us. <laughs> to tow you. Oh, God. That's our ride. Yeah. Oh. Good to see you guys. Ryan, good to see you. Good to see you too. California farmer in California. That's, it's a, it's a, it's You're a, like the same guy you were when you visited Minnesota. But in California. <laughs> it's how it works. 